Um, Zulu Queen, a South African queen, pays visit to church leaders and is quoted saying, we were meant to be here. Uh, which reminds me that, brothers and sisters, that uh, world leaders are filling the Holy Ghost and they are being guided. They, be, they are being directed. They might not always join the church, but they are uh, doors or spiritual doors are being opened through them so that we can continue to gather Israel. We don't really know where the world is going to go. But now everybody knows that you can't stop for too long. Got to keep going. Don't really know where the world is going to go. Okay, a Zulu queen fills the Holy Ghost. That is right. A Zulu queen fills the spirit and is this is her second visit back to Salt Lake City um, at the request of Sister Rasban. Uh, her and her husband were there before. And he recently has passed away. Uh, Sister Rasban met with uh, her and her husband in 2020, along with Elder Rasban, um, who presided at the dedication of the Durban South Africa Temple, and they struck up a friendship. I'm going to read about that right now. April 1st, 2024, news release, uh, the church news, Zulu Queen. That's right, a South African queen, uh, a Zulu queen. Um, Zulu Queen, a South African queen, pays visit to church leaders and is quoted saying, we were meant to be here. Uh, which reminds me that, brothers and sisters, that uh, world leaders are filling the Holy Ghost and they are being guided, they, be, they are being directed. They might not always join the church, but they are... Uh, doors or spiritual doors are being opened through them so that we can continue to gather Israel. Zulu queen from South Africa. Um, HM queen. I'm going to just say queen in because these are some big words, but I think it's Nampo Melelo Nampo Melelo. Okay. Queen in visited the headquarters of the church of Jesus Christ, of Latter-day Saints in Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, the 27th of March, 2024. She met with Melanie Rasban, wife of Elder Ronald A. Rasban of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, and was hosted at a dinner by uh, Elder Mark S. Palmer of the Presidency of the Seventy and his wife, I don't know if that's Jacques or Jacques, I'm just going to say Sister Palmer. Jacques, 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 the queen was accompanied by a colleague, Mrs. T. I'll just say Miss, Miss T. Miss T. Sister Rasban first met the queen in 2020 when the apostle, uh, Elder Rasban, presided over the dedication of the Durban South Africa temple. I remember that. And they were impressed. Um, and the South African temple situated in the heart of the Zulu kingdom. Now, the Zulu tribe is very, very famous. They're, they've been depicted in movies, and uh, they're a big part of South uh, African uh, heritage and culture. At the time, Queen Inn was accompanied by her husband, the late King Goodwill Z. A deep friendship was struck, gifts were exchanged, and a close relationship ensued. When the king passed away a short time later in 2021, Sister Rasban reached out across the world and ministered to the bereaving widow. The deep, that deepened their friendship. Now, Elder Palmer, who attended the events of the dedication, said, It was delightful to once again meet with Queen Inn. It brought back cherished memories of when she and King Z visited the Durban Temple with Elder and Sister Rasban a few years ago. Now, um, out of respect, I will pronounce his name once. Zwell, Zwellathini. Zwellath, Zwellathini. 
Uh, at the time, at that time, his majesty issued a decree that the church was both welcome and needed in the Zulu nation. So it was a pleasure to participate in welcoming the queen on her visit to the headquarters of the church. So brothers and sisters, this is, it's amazing. I know that the spirit works through these leaders. I know that. And I know that our leaders globally are, are being guided and they're being guided, guided through the Holy ghost. It reminds me of, of uh, in a minute, I'll speak a little bit more on that, but president Nelson, uh, I recently read yesterday. Well, I knew that he knew Mandarin, but I looked up the reason why I wanted to know, you know, was it something to do with a mission he served at one time or was he a mission president over uh, in China or Hong Kong or Asia somewhere? No, he, well, first of all, he didn't serve a mission during the time of his you know, being 19 to 20. He served in uh, the United States military in his early 20s during World War II. And, um, but later, the reason why he learned Mandarin was because he was following the prophet. The same prophet that he operated on, Spencer W. Kimball, and uh, he operated on his heart. Um, I don't know if he was the same prophet that, okay, let me see. Was president, did president Nelson also operate on his Volk? No, because he's a heart surgeon. He didn't. Yeah. President Nelson performed a heart operation 1951 on president Spencer W. Kimball. He, oh, he was on the research team that supported the first open heart operation on a human being, uh, in 1951, but later, sorry, later operated. I was going to say that would be pretty young of uh, Spencer W. Kimball to be operated on, but. It was later. And then wanting to follow the prophet, he learned Mandarin because President Spencer W. Kimball said that we should learn about the Chinese people. This might have been in the 60s or 70s. No, no, it was when he was prophet that we should learn about the Chinese people. We should learn their languages and we should communicate with them. And so what did President Nelson do? He learned Mandarin so that he would follow a living prophet. So Elder Palmer, who attended the events of the de dedication, said, it was, a, it was delightful to once again meet with Queen Inn. It brought back cherished memories of when she and King Z visited the Durban Temple with Elder Sister Rasban a few years ago. At that time, His Majesty issued a decree. I already read that part, didn't I? While in Utah, the Queen visited the church's welfare square and humanitarian center. She had a private tour of the new Layton, Utah temple. And I could tell just, I mean, by the way she looks, she's filling the spirit. Leaders don't always join the church, but what they do, do I'm talking about world leaders, but the Lord works upon their hearts and they are moved. They're able to be moved so that doors can be opened. And when they do join, I'm sure it's amazing. Uh, she had a private tour of the Leighton Temple, which will be dedicated in June. She also met with South African students at Utah Valley University and BYU. Now, one thing that came to my mind, I'm trying to stay positive, but something came to my mind. I wonder how, it was a question, how some of these students that will be coming from Africa where the church is booming, they're not woke there, okay? So when they come to BYU and they see a lot of the, the activism going on with the students, that can create some concerns. I think we need to be mindful of that as a church and maybe be way more proactive about working on that stuff. We were at one time in our history. And either that, um, my opinion is you get that done or you sell the college, period. Anyway, back to spiritual things, which I love because that's why I'm doing this. And uh, so young people preparing for missionary service at the Missionary Training Center also she visited, right? And here are some photos. And that's her friend that accompanied her. Uh, and I love this picture. Look at that. There's the Book of Mormon. In, is that in Zulu? I don't know what the... Yeah, Book of Mormon in Zulu. Sister Rasban gives it to her. 
gospel's true, brothers and sisters. Look at the look at their meekness and their humility. I love this one right here where they're sitting right there in the conference center. I bet she's a fun person to hang out with. I love the gospel. I love what she says here. We were meant to be here. I have learned a lot. I've learned how the church is teaching its people to help one another. What I see is what the Lord teaches. People of the church practice Christianity. It is not just lip service. So she's recognizing, she's filling the spirit and recognize it. The queen who visited the United States on business made the trip primarily to greet the Rasband and Palmer families and said they had a significant mark on them as, as a family. The church has provided significant aid in the Zwazulu Natal area of South Africa, which has experienced recent flood flooding, including projects such as the provision of wheelchairs and resources to help with flood security. Now, the teachings and experiences shared by leaders of the church, brothers and sisters, emphasize the importance of the Holy Ghost. And I mention that a lot, right? Interactions with the world leaders are no different than interactions with our neighbors. And in the process of opening doors for the church's work globally, we can also open doors when we work with our fellow man. I want you to know that I have people on my channel that I don't always see eye to eye with. Okay, I don't. But we, I'm working on them, and I'm bearing testimony with them. Yeah, I have a friend uh, that comments all the time, Nainoa Kalama, uh, who is Hawaiian, and um, I, I've known him for years, decades. Um, I call him an apostate to his face, and he knows that because we're Gen Xers and we don't get offended and triggered over little stupid stuff. Uh, but it's true because sometimes the truth is simply, you know, President Nelson says some things are simply true. Well, some things are just simply true and, um, and simply uh, not always fun to hear, but you simply have to hear it. And you're simply going to sometimes. <laughs> uh, and that's the difference between my generation and the younger one, right? And every generation above me understands it, unless you're a boomer and then you're just like the Zs. Anyway, back to spiritual things. Because I love spiritual things. <clears throat> and I love the Holy Ghost. So work on your apostate friends. Invite them to your barbecues. Love them. Go to movies with them. Talk to them. Bear testimony to them. Be bold. And that's what I do. And not everybody that I have on my program, I see eye to eye. So if you have questions about that, um, just know that I am 100% all in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I bear testimony of the prophet. And I sustain the 15 men with all of my heart. And you can build on common beliefs with people. We learned that on our mission, remember? BRT means build relationships of trust and, and uh, BCB, build on common beliefs, right? Well, uh, so these teachings are universal. And I know the church and its leaders and President Nelson learning Mandarin. Following a prophet opens doors. See what that little thing he did? Well, that was a big thing. All President uh, Spencer W. Kimball said, let me see what he said. Hold on. Uh, why did Pre President Nelson learn Mandarin? Check this out. President Nelson desired to follow the counsel of the prophet, so he immediately began studying Mandarin. Um, why? What did President um? What did President Kimball say? He said, "Pray for the people of China." And start learning Mandarin. <laughs> so he followed the prophet, and look how look what the look how many doors were opened in so many nations. In do you understand what I'm getting at here? The little things, brothers and sisters, the little little things. So um, these teachings highlight the role of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, in influencing and facilitating the church's efforts share the gospel and engage with leaders and, and communities and our 
friends and our neighbors. President Nelson experiences, uh, his experiences serve as a testament to the influence of the Holy Ghost in interactions with world leaders. And over his 36 uh, years of service, including time as a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, and as president of the church, President Nelson has met with numerous world leaders, sharing the gospel and influencing global affairs. His ability to connect with these leaders and make a positive impact ha- is attributed to his spiritual guidance and his presence of the Holy Ghost. Um, and how does this relate to uh, the Zulu Queen? Because our diplomatic skills, like Sister Rasban, can be accompanied by the Holy Ghost, right? Combined with spiritual insights, that enables people to open doors. That that enables the Lord to open doors through you, and to help. Uh, here goes Satan. Satan likes to really disturb me when when the spirit is strong. Disturb my technology. I recorded right before this, and all the sound was gone. I had to do it over. And I'll tell you about a, a sister that just came on and did a a. I, she bore her testimony at state conference and I had her come on. It is the best one, one of, I won't say the best cause I don't know what testimonies you've heard in your life, but I'm going to tell you, you got to watch it. It's one of the best testimonies you'll ever hear. So the T so this demonstrates the crucial role of, of the Holy ghost in the church's outreach efforts, both globally and personally, the teachings of the church also underscore the importance of personal revelation the guidance of the Holy Ghost in navigating life's challenges, including opening and closing uh, doors in one's personal and professional endeavors. The Holy Spirit is described as a constant companion that provides direction, like the Leahona, comfort and discernment, helping individuals to make decisions that align with our Heavenly Father's will. This principle is applicable not only to church leaders in their interactions with world leaders, but also to members of the church as they seek to fulfill their divine potential and contribute to the mission of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. President Benson said, seek the Spirit in all you do, that the Spirit counts. And I've read that before. Even Elder uh, Robert D. Hell's talked about President Benson asking him, uh, looking at him for a long time, and then, um, and then he saw tears in President Benson's eyes uh, during an interview. Um, and he said, after praying, interviewing, and studying, and praying again, Elder Benson asked if I knew who the new president would be. I said, I had not received that inspiration yet. He looked at me for a long time and replied he had neither. However, we were inspired to ask three worthy priesthood uh, Oh, this was a state conference. State conference. This was to call uh, a new president, but he talked about um, how they both moments after the third speaker began, and they're trying to find a stake uh, stake president. Uh, the spirit prompted me that he should be the new stake president. I looked over at President Benson, saw tears streaming down his face. Revelation had been given to both of them at the same time. I know that's true. It happens all the time. Um, the church's teachings emphasize, let's see. Brothers and sisters, the church's teachings emphasize the significance of standing in holy places and associating with holy people as a means of inviting the spirit and recognizing its promptings. Holy people can be people that don't have membership in the church as well. This guidance is particularly relevant in the context of the church's efforts to engage with world leaders and communities as it highlights the importance of creating environments conducive to the Spirit's influence. I love watching how leaders are moved upon by the Holy Ghost. So, in conclusion, the church has always taught that the Holy Ghost is, matters. President Benson taught that the Holy Ghost matters. All of our prophets knew 
and no, and the 15 men follow the Holy Ghost. I don't think there has been one leader, one apostle that's been on this earth that hasn't been a special witness of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? We always think it means looking physically at the Savior, and it is and can be, but I think it even goes deeper than that. I think that you and I are special witnesses of Jesus Christ when we have felt and recognized the Holy Ghost and know what it is and know how it works. And when one of us is called as an apostle, this is my theory. This is my own idea. We call those 15 men special witnesses of Jesus Christ, I think, because every one of them comprehends what it feels like to fill the Holy Ghost. Because there are members of the church that don't understand that. But it can also mean to, uh, to go further. But remember, we're taught that the spirit is more impressionable than physical. So what would it matter if they physically saw? Bruce R. McConkie said in his last talk, I will not know any more than I know now that he's the Savior when I go see him. As of the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters. Not necessarily because he saw him physically. He was making a point. Whether I saw him physically or not, I think he was saying, it's the Holy Ghost that told me he's the Savior. Remember, Simon Peter didn't know that he was the Savior because he spent physical time with him. Jesus looked at John the Beloved and said, no man telleth you this, but as the Spirit of God, it is the Father, and I'm paraphrasing, But it was the Spirit that tells you that I'm the Son of God. So, opening doors, both uh, local and and abroad. The experiences of of church leaders, we can have those as well. And, And experiences like President Nelson, when we follow the prophet, along with churches, uh, the church's teachings on personal revelation and the importance of the Holy Ghost, underscore the belief that the Spirit is essential in navigating the challenges and opportunities encountered in the church's worldwide efforts and our own personal efforts. You know what? I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't always do that, but I'm going to do it now.